the word of the Lord from John 20, 20 from, from verse 1 to 18. And that's page 1089 on the Church Bibles. The Empty Tomb. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in the strips of uh, linens lying, between, um, lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separated from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They, did, did, they still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Jesus, Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. Then the disciple went back to, the home, to their homes. But Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over and looked into the tomb and saw the two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and one at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At, at this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was a gardener, he said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where. Tell me where you have put him, and I will go and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, she, resent, she, she returned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned, in, I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brother and, brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And, the, and she told them that he had said these things to her. Second reading is from 1 John 5, verses 1 to 5, and also can be found on page 1228 of the Church Bible, should you wish to follow it. Faith in the Son of God. Everyone who believes that Jesus is Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God. <coughs> By loving God and carrying out his commands. This is love for God, to obey his commands. And his commands are not burdensome, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. I pray for Jessica. Thank you. Lord, we want to thank you this morning for bringing Jessica to us at very short notice. Lord, we want to thank you for the time that she would have spent looking at scriptures and studying and 
for the enthusiasm and, and the words that she has for us this morning. Lord, may we sit and we take on board and listen to what she has to say. Would you show us something new today, Lord? Would we take something different away to think about this week? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I mean, I've just been so encouraged this morning. It's, you keep saying thank you to me, but actually uh, I want to say thank you to you because it's so encouraging being here with you at Christchurch Bushmead. Um, you're a wonderful congregation. I've been so encouraged by your faith, um, like I said, by your warm welcome. And um, I've just really felt in my spirit this morning that you should be encouraged because I really do sense that God is doing something incredible here and that he has a new season for you that is just going to bring a flourishing. And uh, as we were praying this morning, I had a picture of this church as a hospital. And, uh, and I think God will bring you out of the wilderness, but it might look different to what you're expecting. And I think that this is going to be a place where people come out of the wilderness, where the lost come to be found, where, where the least come to be received. And um, I just, yeah, I just want to encourage you that I think God has an incredible, an incredible future for you. Um, and so I mean, I'm really excited to see what happens in the next few weeks and to, to hear about how the interviews go and to see who your new minister's going to be. But uh, back to today, hallelujah, Christ is risen. I'm so excited. I woke up this morning and I have just got this heart full of anticipation and uh, it's a wonderful feeling, isn't it? It's a wonderful feeling what God has done for us as we come together to celebrate his resurrection today. And I wonder how your Holy Week has been thus far. Um, I've got a picture to put on the screen. We've just heard about this um, in the prayers. This week, uh, Notre Dame, as we know, had a horrendous fire. I mean, look at that. And I look at the light to the side of it and, and it burning down and just, I don't know. But as I was watching that on the news and as I felt really upset, I don't know, I also had a really massive sense of anticipation. What was this actually going to do for France? What was it going to do for the people of Paris? As Christians and non-Christians lined the streets, they cried together, they sang hymns together. Again, there was an encouragement that in, in spite of all that was going wrong there, something was being birthed. That's what I sense, something was being birthed. If you could go to the next picture, and I don't know if you saw this on the news, but my gosh, was I encouraged by this the next day. That despite the roof falling in, despite there still being smoke coming out of the ashes, the cross of Christ stands firm and the resurrection is true. And I just think that that picture speaks such hope. It speaks such hope to us, to France, to the world, that it doesn't matter where the embers are burning, how crushed things might seem, that God can bring life and can bring beauty out of ashes. So I just wanted to start with that this morning. Now, um, I also thought it was important that I tell you a bit about myself. Um, I walked into a church nine years ago, and it completely changed my life. Uh, that's my testimony. I was a bit like the ashes in that photograph. I was a, uh, I was a mess. I was someone that was so lost. Um, I worked for a large corporate company. Um, I thought I had it all, really. I had the money, I had the car, I had the holidays, but I didn't have Jesus. And I didn't know, I didn't know how far off I was, actually, and uh, my friend kept encouraging me, come to church, come to church. And in the end, I said, all right. Because to be honest with you, I'd grown up in a middle-of-the-road Anglican church, you know, from, from birth uh, until I was about 11. And uh, I, I'm not trying to put it down, but it, 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 it wasn't something. I mean, I always believed in God, but I hadn't met Jesus. I hadn't experienced the life-saving experience of having a relationship with Christ. And uh, I walked into this church, and no one had to say anything. I walked through the door, and, uh, and I had this encounter with the Holy Spirit where my feet literally felt like they were stuck to the ground. I couldn't move. And what I felt tangibly was the arms of God completely enfold me in a hug. I was held. And as I looked out to this congregation of people, it was like a cafe church before the service, all I saw were people that looked like light bulbs. 
because I, I saw the, the light of Christ shining out of them. And here I am, <laughs> nine years on. Uh, we, we, Leslie and I were having a conversation before the service. You know, there's blessing and battles. It's not been an easy nine years at times. There have been times of wilderness. There have been times of utter desolation. But my gosh, I wouldn't change it, and there's no path I would rather be on. There's no path I would rather be on. And I just want to encourage you with that this morning. And again, that picture of this feeling like a hospital, that people will come here and they will be saved and they will experience that embrace of Jesus. Their lives are a mess. We know that there are communities out there of perishing people that need to hear the good news of Jesus. And uh, I bring my story this morning as an encouragement. If we could just go to the next slide. Our readings, I have looked at the scriptures, but I believe that God really has something different for us this morning. So I'm not going to give you a, a long exposition of the texts. There's two things I want to focus on. The final line out of the gospel reading, Mary Magdalene goes back and she says, I have seen the Lord. So we can experience the resurrection, but what are we going to do with it? She got back, she said, I have seen the Lord. And then the next slide, please, from 1 John 5. This, who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. I want to say to us this morning that from our two readings, what we are seeing and what we are being told, what the, world, what the Word is revealing to us, is that when we see and we believe, then we are resurrection people. It takes seeing and it takes believing to be resurrection people. And all week, I've had this stirring in me. I felt really uncomfortable. You know, I come from a more traditional setting than this, quite a lot, actually. Um, and, uh, and I felt uncomfortable by Christians, my brothers and sisters in Christ, me included, running around like headless chickens in Holy Week, doing lots and lots of different services. And I just don't believe that that's what God desires of us. That's what I'm feeling. It's making me feel really uncomfortable. I don't think that's what God desires of us. And so my word for you this morning, what I really do think that God is putting on my heart, is that he doesn't just want us to remember the resurrection. He wants us to experience the resurrection. He wants us to be the resurrection. He wants us to be sent out from this church today, being the resurrection in our homes, in our families, in our communities. And it's when we see and when we believe that we are resurrection people. And the thing is, nine years ago I came to faith, but I know that transformation isn't a one-off thing. We've all had experiences of God doing transformation in our lives, but we know it's not a one-off thing. He longs to continue to transform us. He longs to continue to set us free. And so this morning, as we, as we take on that word that he doesn't want us to just be here this morning to remember the resurrection, that he wants us to experience the resurrection, I want us to believe that he can be still now today setting us free on those parts of our lives where we need the chains to come off, where we really need to experience the resurrection power in different parts of our lives. Now, I don't know any of you well, but I know that there will be battles in this room. I know that there will be addiction in this room. I know that there will be deep grief in this room. And what I don't want to happen today is for us to leave this building and to take it with us. Because we have a God of resurrection. We have a God of transformation. And as I keep saying, he doesn't want us this morning to just remember it. He wants us to experience it. He wants us to see it. He wants us to believe it. And he wants us to take it out of the walls of this church and to live it. I believe he has more for us. That's what I'm trying to say to you. I believe this Easter Sunday he has more for us. And we know that when we experience resurrection, when we have those moments of great breakthrough in our lives, we experience hope. We experience grace. We experience the power of Jesus in our lives. And isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing? I mean, I'm sure if I just opened up the room now and just said, tell me, there would just be great stories of what God has done for us. But I want that for you this morning because I don't want you to just remember the resurrection today. I want you to experience the resurrection today. 
So I'm going to do something. I'm not going to speak for much longer because I want to open up space. I want to make space for, some, for us to really encounter God today, to encounter Jesus, to encounter the resurrection. Now, when you came in, you got a pipe cleaner, and you, I know there's a bit of curiosity as to why I've given you each a pipe cleaner. Um, nothing to worry about. Um, but isn't it funny that it's called a cleaner? Anyway, um, uh, what I want to do, in a minute we're going to listen to some music, and uh, I want to invite you to consider this pipe cleaner and to consider the things in your life, the areas of your life that you long to see resurrection. Where do you want Jesus to resurrect your life today? What is it that you could bring to him? What is it that you could lay down at the cross today and walk free from, from this church building as we leave? Because he is here, and he is powerful, and he is mighty, and he is victorious, and he is gracious. And so this morning, I just, as we listen to this music, I would just encourage you, what is God leading you to lay down today? with the symbol of this pipe cleaner. And, and if you want to, I would just encourage you to bring it forward. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a chain with our pipe cleaners. So just pass them to me, we're going to make a chain, and then we're going to put it at the foot of the cross as we listen to this piece of music. So let's listen, let's think, let's pray. And if you feel led, as a symbol, bring your pipe cleaner forward and let's create a chain together. We proclaim your name. We proclaim your name. We lift you up. We exalt you. We believe in your power. Lord, thank you that you are with us. Thank you this morning that you are ministering to, ministering to us. And we lay this chain. We lay every battle, every addiction, every hurt, every pain that is symbolized here in this chain. We lay it we lay it at the cross of Christ. We lay it at the altar where Jesus will have the victory over every life here. So, Lord, we just pray. We pray. I pray over every member, every brother and sister of this church that today, Lord, you would release them. That, Lord, you would build them up. That today they would experience your resurrection afresh in their lives. That they would be filled by the power of the Holy Spirit that is at work within them. Lord, build up your disciples for the season that you are calling them into. May they be blessed. Lord, we ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.